Shavu Atov. Today's stuff is Daf Kufla Kufla Amad Aleph in the Bavas, which we learned for Achenu Kol Beis Yisrael and Sunim Matzar V'Shivya. Let's understand. The last few days we've been learning the sheet of Rabbi Yochanan Broker. Rabbi Yochanan Broker holds that you could even give as an inheritance. You can bequeath as an inheritance to one of your sons. You don't have to give it all to them. You don't have to give it the way the Torah describes it. Yes, the, the Chelik of the Bechor, he's got to get his share, his extra share. But the other shares, his his regular share and the other shares, you can give to one of your sons if you so decide as a your inheritance, as a gift for sure you could do. As we said, you can always give everything away as a gift while you're alive, give it away and uh, give it to whoever you want. But here, Rabbi Yochanan ben Rokha's Chiddush is, is that you can even give it as an inheritance after death, meaning at the time of death, you're giving it to one of your sons, you can do that. Now that's a big Chiddush. We said yesterday and the day before, that we paskin like a birch and a rock. In fact, yesterday's Gemara said, Amrav, Amrav Zreka, Amrav Ami, Amrav Chanin, Amrav Yana, Amrav Rebbe, Allah, Rebbech and Rokha. However, he stole a shitas yachid, and the rabbis disagreed. So the question over here came up as follows Boy, Rav, we're going to have a few issues here in the next few days about <clears throat> uh, dealing with things that Rav said. Well, wait a minute. When did he say that? Why did Rabbi Yochan Broka say that you can give it to one of your sons? The Torah says if you have three sons, nobody's a Bechor, let's assume. Say you have a daughter an older daughter, and then you have three boys, you divide it equally. That's what the Torah says. You divide it, they split it up. And you say, Rabbi Yochum Broker, no, you could decide to give it to all of one of your sons as an inheritance. What's the difference in terms of the, whether it's a gift or an inheritance? Well, the gift, the gift, the gift is, 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 uh, is while you're alive at the time that you give it to him. You could say, I'm giving it to you tomorrow at 9 a.m. You can give it to him. You can't give a gift after, you can't give a gift after death. That's after death, it's automatic. But but Rabbi Yochum said even after death, at the time of death, you can give it to one of your sons if you so desire. You can't give it if there's daughters. You can't give it if there's uh, if there's daughters and sons. You can't give it to one of the daughters if there are sons. But you can give it to one of your sons if there's only daughters. You can give it to one of your daughters. That's Rabbi Yochum ben Brokas Chiddush. The Rabban didn't say that. Rabban Dak and Kuf Chav and Bey said no. You can't do that. You can't say that I want my Bechor not to get a share that everybody agrees with. I want this son, I'm taking him out of the will. I'm taking him out of my bequeath. You can't do it like that. But if you give it to one of your sons, you could. Uh, if one is, you could. Even if you say I'm giving it to one, according to Rabbanan, even if you say I'm giving it to one of my sons, right? Um, I give one of my sons. Um, if you're giving it as a gift, you can give it. But if you said it's a Yerusha, you can't give it as at all. You can't give it as a Yerusha. That's what Rabbanan sheet. Rabbanan says you could. I can, I can bequeath it to one of the sons. When I say bequeath, I mean give it as a Yerusha at the time of death to one of the sons. I'm only giving it to one of three. I don't like the other two boys. I'm giving it to one of the sons, not to, not to, uh, not to the three of them. Rechacham say you can't do that. You can give it as a gift before you die. You can do whatever you want with your money before you die. But you can't give it as a Yerusha, according to Rabbani. Rabbi Yochum Rokha says, yes, you could. And we pass, Rabbi Pasch, Rabbi Yochum Rokha. Okay, so now the issue is this. Boy Rava at the top of the page on the second line in Kufla at Aleph. Boy Rava, but Bari Heach. Maybe his Aloha. How did Rabbi Yochum Baruch get this idea? The Torah says he divided them up equally. The Bechor gets a double share, he divided among the boys equally. Rabbi Yochum says, no. Pasik says, Beyoman Chilvas Banov, the day that he bequeaths it to his kids, that they, as he has a right to do it. The Torah gave him a Torah, not the Rashus, Lav Lahan Chilachomishyasa. The father has permission to give it as a Yerusha to whoever he wants. Of his children. There's only boys, one of the boys, or two of the boys, or three, whatever he wants to do. If there's only girls, he could divide them up among girls. That's where Rechem 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 So maybe Rechem 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 maybe when he's dead, when he's dying. He's a ghost. Boy, Rava, but Bari Heich, what do we do by a person who's healthy? In other words, he's not dying. Kikom Rechem Rechem maybe Rechem Rechem only says, Beshchimera, says Rashbam, Bekarina, baby, Rechem 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 A guy who's dying on his deathbed. <clears throat> and his mind is, you know, he wants to make sure everything's taken care of before he dies. So he says, <clears throat> I'm giving it to one of my sons. I want him to get it. Oh, so Rabbi Yochum Rekha says, well, the day he's dying, if he decides to give it to one of his sons, even as a, be- a, as a bequest, is that the word, as a bequest? Not as a not as a gift. Give it to him at the time of death. The, the, uh, the Barus. So maybe only at the, them. The Barus, because he's about to die. He's about to give it away. Roi Laurish Mihat. He's about to bequeath it immediately because he's going to die. He's he's on his deathbed. And we call that the Yom Chilis Avol Babari Lo, maybe a person who's healthy, person's all his faculties, he's a young man, he's got some kids, and he says, 
I want to give it to one of these sons. I don't like the other sons. Maybe you can't do that. A bari low. Oh, Dilma, I feel a bari nami omer. Uh, 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 maybe even by a person who's healthy, Rabbi Yochum Broca said his halacha. That's the question. We said we pass on Rabbi Yochum Broca, even though he's a shitas yachid. But <clears throat> was he only talking about a person who's about to die or even a person who's healthy? That's the question that Rava raised. Omele Rav Misharsha, Rava, so Rav Misharsha said to Rava, I'll, I'll show you the psak. I will show you that Rabbi Yochum Broca said it even when a person who's healthy. Toshma, as we see here, the Omer Lo, Rav Nas and the Rav Nassan was one of the great rabbis in Bavel. And he said to Rebbe, who was in Eretz Israel, Shalim, etc., up north, wherever he lived, right? Um, he said to Rebbe, Shanita, you people in Israel, Shanita Mishnaskin Berachim Baroka. You learn your mission like Berachim Baroka, who's a Yachid. Where did you get that from? How do you know that? How do I know that you learn your mission like Berachim Baroka? How does he say that? Tanan, he didn't even see. Not, you know, the, the Gemara that we had that Rebbe says, Befeir, shalach, Rebbe Rebbe. he's not even saying that. He's just saying, but you learn your mission like Rebbe Rebbe. even maybe he didn't hear that psaac, but he said, apparently you go like Rebbe Rebbe. Why? The Tanan, <clears throat> the famous case of Benin Dichrim. We know what is a ksuba. Ksuba means uh, it's a man's obligation. It's a marriage contract that he has an obligation to give his wife X amount of money, assets, etc., to feed her, take care of her, etc. This goes against the common concept of the husband's learning in Koilo and she's out working, right? So the truth is, this is a common thing that they do that. They, she has to agree to it. She has to want to do it because the Ksuba says he's going to support her. Nowhere in the Ksuba does it say she's going to support him, right? So you have to agree to that. Otherwise, you know, if a fight breaks out right after the marriage, I thought you're going to work. You want to sit in Koilo, right? Um, that's We got a contract here. That's the Ksuba. I got the exhibits in my hand that says you're going to support me. Okay, so among, besides that support, we've learned this is called exhibits been different. There's another clause in there that the rabbis added on, which says as follows: Let's say he's marrying her, and her father, right, wants the he says, you know, vifel gista, you know, they ask the father, her father, what are you giving, you know, a dowry, uh, some money over here, what do you got here? So he says, listen. I'll be glad to give the money, but remember what happens. Let's say he gives her a million dollars, right, in the marriage. Next day, she dies. Right, what happens to the money? The husband gets it, right? So let's say, so the husband gets it. Uh, the father's not too happy about that. Especially, think of this coming case. He marries her, the husband marries her, and they have some children, right? Eventually, she dies before him, and uh, they left two sons, right? Now he marries another woman, which he's entitled to do. In fact, he should, he should marry somebody else, marry somebody else. And they have 10 children. They have 10 children. Now, what happens when the husband now dies? He has how many children? 12, right? right? But now that whole million dollars, presumably it increased a little bit too if he invested it properly. He didn't give it to some broker, you know, and they're still now, now it's... Uh, Let's say the million dollars is still there, right? What's going to happen to that million dollars? It's going to divide, divide up among 12 children. But is that fair? The first father-in-law said, listen, I want to give a million dollars, but I want that money to go my to my grandchildren, to those two. Oh, so that's part of the ksuba. So we put that in there. The tanan, low cost of love, if he didn't write that in the ksuba, if he didn't write in different, your male sons, in other words, the first husband with the first wife says, it's only one husband we're talking about, right? The husband says, writes in the Ksuba. He's if he didn't write this, it's valid anyway. It works anyway. He has to write in there, Ksuba's been different. He has to say, listen, your boys, any children that we have together, which eventually is those two children, right? Those children that I have with you, in and Yarsum, because they're gonna Yarshim the million dollars. They're gonna get the million dollars. Yo came to more than the other brothers. In other words, let's say the, the first father in law gave a million dollars, right? And as we said, they had two kids together. Later on, she died. Then he had other children. He had other children with another wife, another 10 children. And he left over a nice uh, $100,000. Besides the million dollars, there was $100,000 there that he had he earned on his own. After he left the Kolel, he earned that on his own, $100,000. Now he's saying like this, the million dollars belongs to the first two children. The $100,000 gets divided up among all 12 because they're all his children. So that's what he says. That's part of the ksuba. If you didn't write that in the ksuba that your children are going to have with you, 
they're going to get the ksubus of a yoser above the other share of the common share, the hundred thousand dollars. Dimachun chayv he has to do it anyway. Why? Why? Why do he have to do it anyway? Chayv shoots my bezin. That's a condition of the court. In other words, that's an automatic. That's an automatic. If you left that out, it's got to be in there anyway. Because why did the rabbis give this thing? Why did they to encourage fathers-in-law to give a dowry? Because Allah is going to say, why should I give? I'm going to give you money. What happens if something happens to the daughter and the money's all going to go to your kids from somebody else? I don't want that. I'll uh, I'll give them, um, uh, leave me alone. I'll, when they come to the bar mitzvah or the wedding, I'll give them a nice gift, but I'm not going to give you money now. So in order to, cur- to encourage the father to give money, that's that's what made that. Now, it says over there, they're going to inherit it. Okay, so you know what? So what, what does this have to do with this dialogue? We have a dialogue here with Nussan and Rebbe. Uh, he says, uh, and uh, Reb Nussan said to Rebbe, I understand you learn your mission like a Bilchum Baroka, a Shitas Yachid. How do you know you learn the mission that way? Because it says, these ch- part of the Ksuba says, that your children, the children I'm going to have with you, my first wife, they will get the share in and yar. So what is the Lushan? They will inherit more than the other brothers. What do you mean inherit more than the other brothers? An inheritance is automatic. It's divided up equally. Yet you say that a Lushan, uh, you can give more to one than the other. In other words, effectively, he's saying that the two first two children that I have with you, they're going to get more money than the other ones, right? When the father, the husband dies eventually with 12 kids, Two kids are going to get more. Well, that's also dividing it up unequally, right? The Yerusha is divided up unequally. If you say it's a gift, it's a gift. But he said in the Yarshan, they're going to inherit. That's the Lashon of Yerusha. So you see over here, so Rav Nassim said to, Rav, to Rebbe, you you put that in your Mishnah, you wrote in the Mishnah, that that Ksubas bin Dichrin, where they're going to inherit more, these two boys are going to inherit more than the other ones, legitimately, because their their grandfather gave the money, but they're, you call that an inheritance, and they're going to get more. So you see over here, that you call that you going like Rabbi Yochum ben Baroka, because you're saying that one can bequeath to one child more than the other, right? That's what you're saying. You can bequeath more than the other. Amala, Rabbi, Rabbi says it's no proof from there. So Rabbi, di- this is part of the dialogue. We'll see already the proof is right there because he said, Lashon of Yerusha, and that, and you said, you, you're going like Rabbi Yochum ben Baroka, that you can divide up among the boys, not equally, unequally, you're dividing up the Yerusha. That's like Rabbi Yochum ben Baroka. According to the Rabbanan, you can't divide up Yerusha. You can gift them whatever you want before you're dead, but you can't divide up the Yerusha any differently than the Torah mandates. So Amala, Rabbi said, no, Yasfun Tznan. The lushan is not that they will they will inherit more than the others. They will be they will take more than the others. In other words, as gift as a gift. So Rebbe, and then Rebbe said, "Well, I take that back." I was childish when I said Yasfun Tnan. The lushan is really Yerush. In other words, these two boys will get more, will be gifted more, or will be, or will or will uh, get a, a greater a greater inheritance, a greater bequest. Uh, I made a mistake. And I was, it was childish. And I had the chutzpah to answer of Nassan in that manner. By Nassan the, the Babylonian. Ella, why? It can't be Yasfun Tanan. In other words, the Takana was really Yarsan as an inheritance. Why? Because if it was a gift, if it was a gift, they would come before other liens. In other words, if I if I wrote that in the Ksuba, that they will receive, those two boys will receive it as a gift. That means that they come before any later uh any later mishabadim, and the kaimla we hold up in dechun lo tov mishabadi. The boys cannot take mishabadim. In other words, when a person, when people come to take an inheritance from the father, and the father had sold some property to somebody else during their life during his lifetime, they can't take that away. They only get it at the time of death. Their 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 claim is only at the time of death. If the father sold property to somebody else. They can't take that because he sold that. They, they, the other person that he bought that sold the pro, that bought the property, they have the uh, first lien. <laughs> if it was a gift, if you're saying that the two boys it was a gift, so that was that was before. Why can't they take it from the They 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 were gifted it before. They were gifted it already at the time of the ksuba. Elish mamina must be yarsun tanan. Must be yes, it is yarsun uh, yarsun tan that it was yarsun. Now, Rashbam says the next words are a little bit extra. Man Sham is like this like Svara. Who is the one who holds this Svara? What do we mean by that? This Svara. That if you give more to one and less to another, in the Lushna of Yerusha, 
that works, that's Rabbi Yochum Roka. Rabbi Yochum Roka, Shema Amino, Afilu Babari. So this answers our question. In other words, we start off a question, Rava asks a question. Rabbi Yochum Roka says that you can, you can bequeath more to one than to another, right? Of the sons. You have several sons. You can give more to one than another. You can give one everything. You can do whatever you want as long as you don't mess up with Chelik Bechora. You can do whatever you want. Is that only by a Shemera or even by a Bari? Well, you see over here from the dialogue of Rabbi Nassim and Rebbe, which we're going to deal more with the dialogue. Rabbi Nassim says, hey, you hold like Rabbi Choroka from your Mishnah, you see, because he say you can give more than one to the other in Lashon of Yerusha. And, and Rebbe really admitted to that, that it is a Lashon of Yerusha. But first he tried to weasel out and say, no, it's not a Yerusha, it's a gift. But he says it can't be a gift because if it were a gift, they would have a prior lien over later Lekuchas that the father sold the property to or gifted the property to. Oh, it uh, must be that it's Yarshan Tan. Who holds it? That's Rabbi Yochanan. That proves our question that we're speaking about a bari. The Rabbi Yochanan Morocco is not only speaking about a person who's on his deathbed when he says, I can give it to one son more than the other, or two out of ten, or whatever he wants to do. Uh, that That's not only his deathbed, because here we're speaking about Rabbi Nassim said to him, I, I see from this case that you hold like Rabbi Yochanan Broca, the case of Benin Dichrin, this Subas Benin Dichrin, that you hold like Rabbi Yochanan Broca. So you see Rabbi Yochanan Broca holds it even by a bari. But besides that, okay, so we've answered that question. That is question, is it is it only by a Shema or by a Bari? No, it's even by a Bari. But back to the issue itself of the dialogue between Rab Nassan and Rebbe. The first Rebbe said, Yasfun Tanan. It says, and it was, it's not just like Rebbe Elchem Broken, go like everybody. It's a gift. The Suvus Mendechon is a gift. It's not a Yerusha. Amalei Papa Labaye, Shabbat said Tabaye, okay, forget about that, that it doesn't, you know, that uh, about the proof. Oh, yes, you have, you have proof that Rava, uh, to, to Rava's question, was it only by a shkima or only by a bari? The fact that Rav Nassan was trying to, to ask Rebbe from the case of Nin uh that you see the Golik of Yom Nechua, that shows that he's speaking about even by a bari, because he didn't say, I'm only speaking about a shkima, not a bari. It's mashma that Rav Yochum was speaking about a bari. But the question is, why did Rebbe answer Rav Nassan and say, um, uh, you say, well, no, no, it's not a case of the Yerusha. It's not Yerusha. Rabbi Yochum Rokh is talking about Yerusha. Tzus from Dichon is not Yerusha. It's a gift. That's how he first tried to answer him. What's the point? However you learn the Tzus from Dichon, the fact that, remember, that those two boys are going to get, they're going to they're gonna split the million dollars besides the 100,000 they're going to split equally with everybody else, with the other 10, 10 half-brothers that they're going to have. Besides all that, What's the difference if it's Yasmin or if it's Yarsan? If it says a gift is Yarsan, how does he give it away anyway? They're, the money's not here yet. We're talking about when they write the Ksuba. They're married. There's a young Mary. They're both 18 years old, the boy and the girl. And they're trying to get the father to give more money. So, okay, I'll give him a million dollars, but you have to have the Ksuba's been different. He has to be, it's part of the, part of the Ksuba. That, those, that any children that she has in the future from this man, they will get the share. They will get the million dollars, not the other sons that come from a different wife. Okay, however you learn it, how can he give something now that's not there? He says, oh, he, it was a gift. It wasn't the Yerusha. So it's not a case of Yochum and Broca. What do you mean? It's a gift. You can't give a gift. You don't have it yet. You can't give something you don't have. Even according to Mayor Wolves, that you could give something that's not here yet. You could be mocked. You could give something to somebody that's not here yet. How do you lift up for somebody? That's to, to somebody who's here. But Mayor Wolves, you can give something that's not here. I can, I can give you something that I don't have yet. I don't have it yet, but when I get it, I'll give it to you. A future, as we say, a future. I'll give you something. I'll give you these stock options when I get them. But you have to be here. Here he's giving it to who? To kids who aren't born yet. It's talking about when they're married, right? When they get married, the ksuba, he says, no, he's not giving it to the wife. Wife's dead. The wife is going to die. No, no, no. When the ksuba, she's not dead when the ksuba's No, no. Yeah, but the wife dies. It it goes to the husband. She, The kids don't inherit the mother. The husband inherits her. Now, he's giving the wife a ksuba, but in the ksuba, he writes, he promises that any children that she had, that she has, they will get the, the million dollars that the father's about to give now. Is it they will have it as an inheritance? That was that was how Rav Nassim said to Rebbe, show you, uh, you know, you she seem to be going like Rebbe from Baroka. So Rebbe said, no, 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 no. We're not talking about inheritance. We're talking about as a gift, okay? But either way, from the fact that, from the dialogue, you see that he owes Rabbi Yochum and Broca, holds it to be that is that Rav Nassim said that since Rebbe, like Rabbi Yochum, we're talking about a case of uh, a person who's buried, who's not a Shkimim Rock, we're talking about at the time that they're getting married. But back but back to the issue itself of, of Yarsun or Yasfun, whether it's a Yerusha or not, yes, it's a proof that Rabbi Yochum Broca is talking about even a Bari, because from Zayalog, you see that they were talking about a man giving a Ksuba at the time when they're getting married, and he's talking about. Uh, 
he, he says, you go like Rebbe Chumam Broca. So you see Rebbe Chumam Broca is talking about a bari. But what's the difference if it's in, in terms of their dialogue? Rebbe first tried to answer him, no, it's not Rebbe Chumam Broca because it's a gift. It's not a Yerusha. Rebbe Chumam Broca is talking about it. You do it as a, as a bequest, not as a, not as a gift. But what's the difference? How does it work anyway? Even if it's as a gift. So you say it's not it's not the uh, Rabbi Yochum broke. It goes even according to rabbis. But how can you give a gift? To, you don't have it yet. You don't have it. You're giving something that you don't have yet. You're That's giving it wrong. to these kids. And even if you say, pardon? It's, a loan. it's not a loan. It's not a loan. He gave it to him as a gift. He says, the money that I get from you, the money that the father-in-law is about to give him, right? I, I bet this, this money, I'm going to give him that money. I'm going to give to these kids that I have from you. So he doesn't have the money yet. And we don't know if the money's going to be there at the time that the wife dies. And we don't even know, you know, we don't know if that the wife's going to predecease the husband. This is all just in case the wife dies first and he inherits her money. Can't you, can't you do something like a trust? In other words, the yeah, no, there. they don't have trust. There's no trust. There's no trust. The trust, no, trusts are not, uh, there's no, you, you could have today a halacha trust according to some lawyer, whatever. But the Gemara doesn't deal with trust. There's no such thing as trust. Trust means trust is a trust is a fictitious ownership that the lawyers came up with that you don't own it. I don't own it. The trust owns it. Who's the trust? The trust is just uh it's a yeah, it's a ghost out there. You know what I mean? It's a way to avoid taxes and, and all kinds of legal issues and things like that. But halachically, it's it's mine or it's yours. Is there is there is there a bankruptcy minatora? I owe you the money. Oh, I went bankrupt. You know, I don't owe you the money anymore. There's not that. That's uh, these are all fictitious things that people came up with uh, there in order maybe to do business, whatever. But um, he doesn't. Yeah. So what he's saying is, if I inherit the money from the wife, right? Because you could say that the husband, the wife has the money. She has the money, even though Komash is Kanisha Kanabala. But this was given under the understanding that it's hers. But if she dies, it's going to go to the husband. So the husband says, when I get the money and if we have kids, I'm going to give it, I'm going to give the million dollars to your kids. Fine. So even if you say, you, number one, you can't be like Shalom, even if you all like her baby, you could be like Dev Shalom. That's only to somebody who's here, but the kids aren't born yet. They're just getting married now. So how does this work anyway? How does it, how does it, how does that promise work? I will give the money that I get from you. I'm giving it to those kids. They're not here yet. You're, the kids aren't here yet. I don't have the money yet. And even if I get the money, even if I get the money now, I pocket it right now and you give it to me right now, but they're not here yet. Ella Tanai Bezin. The answer is, it's a condition of the court. It's a, it's a, it's a uh, special regulation that the court made that it, that's how it works. Rosh Baum says even, the Olam Tanai Bezin. It's like Hefker Bezin Hefker. Money, the court can take away your money and give it to somebody else. So it's like, you're right. You don't have it yet, but it's a special condition of the Ksuba. The Rabbana made that regulation in order to encourage fathers in law to give their daughters money. To give him a dowry. Oh, it's Tanai Bezin. Uh, Tanai Bezin shiny. It's different from Tanai Bezin, even though it's not norm, It's not a normal transaction. Normal transaction wouldn't work. I can't give something to somebody who's not here. But it's a special regulation of the court. Hachanami Tanai Bezin shiny. So here also you could say that it's Tanai Bezin, and it works whether it's a gift or whether it's a Yerusha. However you learn. Amale. Yeah, so, so in other words, his question was, what's the point of, what was Rebbe's answer in saying, uh, well, Yasfu and Tanani is trying to answer him and say it wasn't really Yerusha, like Rabbi Yochum Broca, it's a gift. Even if it's a gift, how does it work? It's a condition. It's a condition of the court. So it's a condition of the court, whether you're right, yes, I'm telling you, I'm a lady, Mishim, the Gemapa, Gablash, Yarsen. Yes, but Rabbi Nassim's point to Rebbe was, we're, we're talking now about the dialogue, the proof that Rabbi Yochum Broca is speaking of Bari that we have already. But the question is, how does the dialogue work? Rabbi, Rabbi Nassim said to Rebbe, oh, you see that you go like Rabbi Yochum Broca, he said, Yerusha, he says, no, I didn't say Yerusha, I said Yasmin. Even if it's Yasmin, how does it work? It's a condition of the court. So it's a condition of the court, whether you write Yasmin or the Yerushim. But his point was, his point was, yeah, because he said a Lushan of Yerusha. Why did he say a Lushan of Yerusha? Just, if it's a condition of the court, just say the court gave it to them. Why did he talk about Yerusha? Adam Rabbi then said, no, that's not an answer. No, what I said is, is not good. That doesn't answer because it says Yerusha. The Tanan, low cost, I'll tell you why. The low, the Tanan, the, the, that same mission that talks about the Benin Dichrin talks about another Tanai Besin, another condition of the court, a regulation. The Tanan Lokas Lo Benin, let's say, say, part of the it's part of the is not only I'm going to give you $200 or $100 if she's an Amana, but it's all this business about your male sons will inherit your uh, inheritance over and above the shares of their brothers from a different wife. But he also has to write the following thing What about your female daughters? Low cost of love, he said, your daughter, your female daughter, that I have with you, yeah, you have Let's say 
I die. And what's the, what do the daughters get? Remember, the boys get the Arusha. But the boy, girls are entitled to maintenance, to uh, whatever you call it, alimony or sustenance. They're going to get that. They can stay in my house, be sound and soy, and they will, they will eat from my assets. In other words, they're entitled to be supported, child support, until they get married. Until they get married. When they get married, the husband's supposed to take care of them. But until they get married, they can, they can. Now, let's say he didn't put that in the Ksuba. They're still high, right? True to my best. It's a condition of the court. Ah, if that's the question of the court, when you give it to the daughters, the daughters is not an inheritance. The daughters is a gift. The daughters don't inherit when there's boys. When there's right. actually a gift at the beginning. Right, right. right. Oh, so here, when it comes to the boys, the boy says, in Unyarsen. In other words, he says, first he said, no, it's not about Yarsen, because here the fact is, even if you say it's not because of Yarsun, it's not because it says Yerusha, right? But rather, look at the look at the end of the mission. Another condition of the court was that the girls are entitled to child support until they get married. He's and but the girls, it's a gift. He's giving it to them. And how does that work? To my best Now we come back to the issue on Friday. Let's say he said, remember, when what he said, according to the Rabbana, that the Yerusha doesn't work. However, if you said I'm 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 in I'm giving um I have uh, five sons and I'm giving everything to five son number five the one as Yerusha. I'm giving it to him as Yerusha, or I'm I'm bequeathing it to him as a gift. If you mention gift anywhere in there, it's okay. That was the Mishnah said. The Mishnah back in Day said we described that on Friday. If you write if you write gift anywhere in there, and we said on Friday that we pass in, even if he says I'm giving. This son is a gift, and this son is a Yerusha, two separate men and two separate things. One is uh, the fact that you say gift to one of them works on everything. Ah, so if that's the case, even the Rabbana Ramoda. So forget about that. In other words, he says the argument that, that Rebbe said to him, Rebbe first said that uh, it was just an Yashin, it was a gift. Even if it wasn't, even if it wasn't, even if it was a Yerusha, but he mentioned gift by the second condition, the condition of the girls. The girl, there you mentioned gift. So wherever you say, this one gets a Yerusha, I'm giving field number one to son number one as a Yerusha. And I'm giving field number two to son number two as a gift. It's a gift for everybody. And therefore it works. And that's how it works. So that would be the answer. Rashbam says in the last couple lines on Rashbam, these two takanas, one for the sons, the male sons are going to get the Yerusha of the, they're going to get the dowry, let's call that. And the girls are going to get child support. Presumably they were regulated at the same time. The rabbis made these takanas at the same time. And we said on Friday that everybody agrees if it's talk to you, remember, even according to Rishlokesh, right? It was it Rishlokesh or of Sheshis, forget the the, the Lashem. Questions on Rabbi Rishlokesh, my class. Uh, so the question is that what's called both like talk to the book of the book of the that since it was said by the Tony Yarson, but uh, the Tony Lashen Yarson, Lashmin Masis and the Rabbanan Moda, Phil Bishnei Bidam Shtay Sadas. That's why I said Yarson. Tell me that even the Rabbanan Moda, since one was a gift and one was a inheritance, they're both considered gifts, Phil Rabbanan Moda. And therefore, therefore, in terms of the dialogue, again, the proof. That the, the, the questions were of the, what Rabbi Yechon Mazoka say was he talking about Yerusha? He was talking about like Rabbi Yechon In other words, the proof is that Rabbi Yechon Baruch said his lachi even by a bari because Rav Nassim tried to prove from uh, Rabbi's own words about uh, Benin Dichrin that uh, that goes like Rabbi Yechon Baruch. Well, we're talking about uh, bari over there, so clearly Rabbi Yechon Baruch is talking about bari. But the question over here is: Is it a Yerusha or is it a gift? Well, even if it's a Yerusha, even if it would be a Yerusha, and it works because if it's a regulation of the court, since you mentioned Matan in there too, it's like a gift. Oh, so we said over here, since the Rabbana made two kanas, these are both found in the Vixubus ben Dichrin and the Vixubus ben Nukva, and the, bo- the Vixuba, again, that the boys are going to get the dowry and the girls will get child supporters in the same Mishnah in Vixubus in the days and the days. So he says, and 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 presumably the regulations were at the same time. So therefore, it's like tok de dibur. And therefore, if it's a gift to one and a yerusha to another, as long as we mention gift to one of them, it's a gift for everybody. So therefore, yeah. Again, how does it work? You can't give it something yet that you don't have yet. But that's the takon of the court. That's the takon of the court. Fine. But so yes, this kasha to buy it. 
Mimaid Bachat Beit Din Iskin. How do you know? How do you know that it's like Toch De Dibra that was said with one court? Maybe these were two regulations given by two different courts, not at the same time. Dilma Betray Beit Din Iskin. Maybe they were. Maybe these regulations. One for Ksubas been indifferent for the boy, male boys getting the dowry, and the other one about the girls getting child support. Maybe they were done by two different bezins. Dilma Betray Beit Din Iskin. Maybe they were regulated. They were rule. The, these rules came up two different courts. So I can't say that. The Tani Rashi says over there, Zem Medrash Dorosh Rebbe Lezer Ben Azariah. The Gemara over there in Ksuba says, says Rebbe Lezer Ben Azariah said, Lein Chacham B'Kerem B'Yavni, Darshan in Kerem B'Yavna. Habonim Yershu, V'Habonim Yershu. The rule is, the sons inherit, and the girls get child support. Ma Habonim Ein Yershu, El Acham, Yishu Abim. Just like the sons only get Yerusha after the father dies, at the time of death. Habonos La Yizanu, El Acham, Yishu Abim. They only get support after their father dies. In other words, even if they're above a certain age, remember if the, that the, they have to fend for themselves if the father so chooses. He only has to support his kids up until six years old or whatever it is. But the uh, the idea that the the special court regulation that the sons inherit the the dowry and the boy and the girls get child support it's only after death. Yeah, Machat Beit Din was one court. It's going to the Alfina to come to You can learn out one to come from the other because it was the same court. So it was like it was like uh, it was like it was like tok de dibur. If they made two regulations and it was one court, it was like they said the it's like you made the condition at the same time. Eliam betray be dinis. And if it was two different courts, hey chafina takana takana. How can you make one takana from another takana? Two different courts can pass in differently, and it's not it shouldn't be considered at the same time. Says Mimai, who says dil malolam emil chav betray be dinis. Can it's possible it was done even if it was done two courts? O be dina basra talking ke be dina kama. And the second court, Paskin, like the first one, in other words, we wanted the second court. The fact that he says, just like the boys inherit after death, so the girls get child support after death, maybe they did it like that. It was done by two different courts. It could have been two different courts two different times. But the reason they, uh, uh, the reason we say that he said, just like the boys get, get um, Yerusha after death, the girls get child support after death, is also because you don't want to have <clears throat> two different courts contradicting one another. So if you say the boys get the Arusha after death and the girls get the child support before death, it wouldn't go in sync. It's like you're going against the previous court. So the courts want to uh, want to be in, in you know congruous with one another, and therefore it's possible that it was done at two different times. And yet they said that. So therefore you can't prove it from that. It's possible that it was one court, and therefore it's the Yerusha Zematana, and it's not a solid proof that it goes like the Rabbanan. That what that as long as you mention Matana, the Matana works on Yerusha too. So it's not clear 100 percent But the fact is that the Ksubas bin Jukhan says it as Yerusha. It's given as the Yerusha. And uh Rav Nassan said that's proof that um Rav Nassan said that that's that was proof to Rebbe that that, that Rebbe now Rebbe himself actually Paskin like Rabbi Yochum Broker we had in yesterday's Gemara. We had Omar of Zreika, Omar of Ami, Omar of Khanin, Omar of Yana, Omar Rebbe, Allah Rabbi Yochum Broker. But even if if um if uh, Rav Nassan had not heard that psak, he deduced that psak from the fact that Rebbe said the Ksuvah's been different, and he said a Lashon of Yarsan. So first, Rebbe tried to get out of it and say, you know, Yasvin, no, they take it, it's not a Yerusha. But then he said, it's got to be that it's a, a Yerusha, because otherwise they would be able, they would have a first lien over, over later purchases of his father later on. So therefore, he admitted that it is that way, but it could very well be that since the Lashon, since if if you learn that the second, that the, that the Ksuvah's been in Nikvim, was a, which is a matana, was said at the same time, then it could be that's because Zeb matana, Zeb Yerusha, works as a matana. So it's not 100% proof either way. Om Rabbi Yudah, the two dots on the day. So Om Rabbi Yudah, Shmuel. Now this Gemara is going to be brought down over here, uh, not because we're talking about so much about the, the well, it's related to Nach a little bit, but because we're going to have the same question on tomorrow's daf of Boy Rava, uh, is, is, is the issue that we're talking about now only by a Shchiv Marah, or is it only by a bari, only by a person who's healthy. What are we talking about? Am Rabbi Yura, Am Shmuel. A strange, strange halacha. It's a halacha that, these are one of three cases we're going to have later on, that's a hilchasa below time. It's like different nevuah. What are we talking about? A man decides to give everything to his wife. He gives her a shtar. He gives her a, 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 a shtar. I'm giving you everything. I'm giving you everything. All my assets go to you. Pardon? In your name. <laughs> when, when he's alive. When he's alive, it's in your name. It's in your name. Putting everything in your name, giving everything in your name. You know what? Does she get it? Why not? It's a star. No, we're assuming Loas to Ella He only made her a guardian. 
He wants to ensure that his children will respect the mother. It's their mother. He wants to ensure that. So he said, no, it doesn't make sense. I got a star. I got a, it's written black on white that I received everything the wife says. It's all mine. No, it's not. Even though it doesn't, it's, it's written, signed, everything. No. Loas of trupa. Why? Because he's trying that now. And Rajbam says, this is, it doesn't make any sense. The different of way. It's like you know, prophecy. But that's the um, that's what Besson decided. The rabbi said that he, presumably that a man would not give everything to his wife. He should give it to his sons, as the Torah prescribes. Give it to your sons. And if he wrote everything to his wife, it's only because he wants her to be in charge. She should be the guardian, the trustee, the trustee for the estate. It's that, that, that's what we're assuming now. That's what he says. What about if he made one, gave everything to one son as a gift, not as a uh, Yerusha? Again, let's say he gave everything. I'm giving everything to my older son. My older son giving him everything. Again, the same idea. Why would he give it only to one son? If he gave it as a Yerusha, like Rabbi Yechim Rokin says, you're right. But here, maybe even according to Rabbanan, here is a gift. He's only making up yours. What about Bunei Cotton? What about a young son? What about his youngest son? Could, could you say that there too? He wants them to, uh, he's only giving us a trustee. Even if he gives it to his young son, who is still in his baby crib. Okay, maybe he says the other sons are, you know, I know they're already bad, but maybe this son will work out okay. So giving it to him. Even a case like that, if he gave everything to one son, because a man wouldn't normally do that. All right? And if it's an older son, fine, he wants the younger sons to respect the older son as a possible God, you should respect them, even a younger son also. And as we gave it to one person, you assume, in other words, it's not a gift, even though it says I'm gifting it to you, I'm giving it to you as a gift. No, it's not a gift. That's what the rabbi said. That's a halacha below time because they said a person wouldn't normally do that. Now, that maybe it's different today, but you know, you, you, if you have. Saying it's not valid? Pardon? Whole transaction is not valid. It's not no, it's what he's no, what he, it's valid in the sense that he made her not Petrupus. She's the trustee of the money, but it's not hers. It's not hers to keep. This is if he gave away everything. If he gave her just a gift, he says, I'm giving you $25. And the other million's going to the boys. Okay, she gets the money. But we're talking about he gave her everything. Because of Kol Nechasev, gave everything to one to this woman. Why would he give everything to him and leave the sons out? She's only a guardian. Same thing with the son, give it to one son. Okay. What about other cases? Shita Beno. The Acher, Acher Matana B'Rabbeinu. Now, Rosh Baim has several ways to learn this, but he learns it this way, that like a son, we just said, let's say, let's say he gave it to somebody else, to a stranger, giving everything away to Jim or to the church. So Acher Matana B'Rabbeinu. If he gave it to a son, we already said that he gave it to one son, the son's only an opportunity, he's only a guardian. If he gave it to somebody else, then it's a real gift. Why would he give it to somebody else? Now, today you'd say, yeah, give it to the lawyer, right? If you have a lawyer, okay, fine. You have different rules today, different understandings today. Today, people would give everything to their wife, presumably. Well, who knows? But that's the halacha. It says, pshita b'no v'acher, acher matona b'no v'acher. meaning, he doesn't mean b'no and acher. Rajman brings down a different pshat, but he doesn't like that pshat. If he gave it to a son, as you said, the son's only after trip, he doesn't get it. If he gave it to somebody else, a stranger, then he does give us a gift. Why would he give it to somebody else to be a trustee? Didn't make any sense. Okay, he skips the parentheses. Let's say he gave everything to his wife, but she's not his wife yet. She's only his uh, fiance or his divorced wife. Then it's a gift because he wouldn't give it. He wouldn't give it to them to be a trustee. Why? Meaning because he doesn't. It, it, his Ishtar Rusa, There's nobody who's going to respect her. He doesn't have his kids yet from her. So, so there's no reason for her just to earn respect. If he gave it to her, he gave it to her. Gave it to everything his wife, or he gave everything to his divorcee. Then it's a gift. He boiled. What about this? What about Bas Eitzelabonim? What happens if he gave it to a daughter? He has sons, and he gave it to a daughter. The sons don't have to respect the daughter. So if he gave it to a daughter, is it a real gift, or is it only as a trustee? Or Isha Eitzelachim? Let's say he has no sons. He has no sons. He has no father, but he has brothers. His brothers don't have to respect her. In other words, if he gave it to his wife. And he had sons. Okay, he gave it to his wife to that she, she, she should respect, they should respect his wife, his wife, which, which is their mother. But let's say he gave it to a woman, to his wife, and he only had brothers. Why why do we give it to his wife only in brothers? His brother, the brothers don't have to respect the wife. So her it should be a real gift. Or Isha ate so bow. Let's say he gave it to his wife and he didn't have any children from her. He had children from another wife. What do you say there? Is it a gift? Or do you give it for respect? Now, 
Amar Avinu Mishmei the Rava, Bakulu Lo Kana. In all the cases, they don't get it's not a gift. The Bar Meishda Rusa Vishigus, except for the first two. The first two, if he gave it to his wife, he was a fiance. He's not his wife yet. His fiance gave all his money to her. He gave it to his divorcee, to his divorced wife. There's no reason for him to, for them to there's nobody for them to respect. So he doesn't want to respect the, his divorced wife. He doesn't need it for them. It must be it's a real gift. Why would he do it? Whatever the reasons were, but it's a real gift. So he gave everything to his divorcee. She, it's a gift. He gave everything to his fiance. It's a gift. It's not. It's not meant as a guardian. So therefore, he says those two cases she acquires as a gift. The other ones, if he gave it to Bas Eitzelabanim or Isha Eitzelachim or Isha Eitzel Bnei Abal, and it's only as a guardianship. Ravavir Mishmei Durav Amar. In all cases, she do acquire as a gift. Except for the wife against his brothers. If he had brothers, no children, and he had to give it to wife, then she doesn't acquire it. She's a trustee. Or a wife against his, his sons. That Again, she's only a trustee. So where's the machlokas over here? So if Brown points out, the only machlokas is where bas if give it to a daughter, when their sons, right? In that case, the body can be nile. According to Ravina, she doesn't acquire it. She is a trustee. According to Ravir, she does acquire it. Ravir says in all the cases he acquired, except for these two. Well, everybody agrees with Ishta Arusa, the first two, Ishta Arusa, Ishta Grusha, that it's a gift. Why would he give it to her? There's no respect involved over here. He's not trying to get her respect from the other, uh, from his other heirs. So everybody agrees with those two that it's a gift. The Machlokas is only where, and everybody agrees that it's not a gift. She's simply a trustee. The machlokas is where, where, except where's the machlokas? Bas Eitzel Abadim. If he has sons and daughter and he gave it to one daughter, is it a gift? According to Revere, it is a gift because he says that's every, in all cases, you're part except for Isha Eitzel and and Isha Eitzel Ben Abal, but a daughter. If he gave it to a daughter, why did she, the sons don't have to respect her? So it must be he really actually made to give it her as a gift, and therefore it is a gift. And according to the first opinion, Ravina Mishmei the Rava, he says in all cases they don't acquire except for those two. So in that case, the daughter wouldn't acquire, and she would be a trustee. So that's what we have over here. Now the next question we'll start tomorrow with is: is uh, what about a, a, a bari? What, what's the halacha there? This we say that you're giving it as a gift. And it's not really a gift, it's simply a trustee. It's not only by a shimara or even by a uh, even by a bar. We'll deal with that tomorrow, Mr. Have a good day, everybody. Shavua Tov.